Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up filter for REST based services in SAP App Kyber. Now, in the last, uh, in the last video, we built the basic uh, project structure for PO approval. The first page of that app was PO list where uh, we had this list. And most of the time, um, the, the requirement is to find a PO using a search bar on the top. Or uh, if, we, if we compare with the standard SAP Fury uh, app, it has a search option where it searches for the specific supplier or a specific product. So we could build that same functionality uh, in App Kyber by adding a filter on the top. Okay, so this is my PO approval. Let me log in with my ID. This is SAP standard Fury app approval app, uh, EPM approval, approval app. And if we do here, let's say uh, search, it's case sensitive. So like that, or uh, any, if we, in, it, we can search. Now, uh, if we look at the um, uh, URL, so let's remove that and put again, AMA, we go here. Let me drag and the header. So here, the sub, uh, if we see it here, the supplier name uh, ordered by PO, which batch is this one? Uh, do we have filter? Filter, where is it? So usually there will be a filter criteria here on the top order by so this is select uh, gross not this one how about this one uh, this one is ordered by PoID filter so here we have this filter substring of supplier name or product so this criteria we can integrate in our, our, our solution so instead, uh, you know, integrating the full, uh, let me copy this one here. So it says filter substring of, uh, I think person 20 is a single quote. Uh, URL encoding, URL decode. So let's decode. Where is it? Yeah, it's a single code. We can see it here. So this is basically is like single code. 27 is again single code. Comma supplier name. 20 person 20 is a space, which I know. If I'm right. Yeah, so we don't see that. It's a space or uh, product ID equal to that. So we don't need that. We will just in integrate the uh, first part where substring of uh, we take and we pass it as a supplier name so we leave it this uh, for a reference now we'll go back to our application now this is the application here in first thing we have to go in a data and then add a query parameter so here we'll add a query parameter let's call this as a filter uh, is it recording yes and the key is dollar filter this is what is expected dollar filter equals right so we do that where is it here and then is it static no we are going to pass the value to this filter and is optional that's fine so save now we have a query parameter as filter now if we go back to our uh, call on our page here uh, go to variables data variable pure source here we have now a filter parameter an additional filter parameter this is the parameter which will be added to the URL at the, at the end. So we are not going to change here. We are not planning on to pass the filter parameter when we launch the page. So as soon as, as soon as we launch the page, it will still show the full list. So let me log in. And we can prevent that too. I mean, if, we, if you want to add, let's say top 100 uh, rows or 99 rows, you can add uh, another argument for top in the same place uh, in, in the data as a filter and then you pass whatever number you want to pass. So the first part is fine. So we have a filter here. Now on a UI, we need to have a 
search uh, field, right? Search part. So this is where we can get that. Let me switch to another view. Uh, this one. Yeah, this one is better. So in here, we'll get the search bar from here and we'll just put it over the scroll bar. So this is this comes on the top there and save. Now, we need to pass the user value, whatever is entered in this search bar. So for that, we need a variable to store this information or to hold somewhere, right? So we'll go back to our variables and we'll create a page variable. Let's call um, uh, PO search. So this will hold our value. This is a text type and uh, that's fine. We'll go back again. Now on a search here, we need to map a value. So we'll map a value from data variable, page variables and PO search. The placeholder will say search supplier, uh, disable false and the rest of the things are fine. We don't need to change anything else. So now if, if we run our app, uh, if I log in again here, we will have a search bar on the top there, but it doesn't work because we did not code uh, you know, the logic behind. So let's go back again. Now, whenever we enter a value in this um, search search bar, and when we tap on it for uh, you know, getting a specific selection, then we have to perform an action or we have to make a call to the backend and then get the uh, updated information or filtered data. So for that, tap there, click there, go down here, and then get the, um, uh, call the get collection record because we are going to call the collection record or rather is it a, yeah get collection record we'll connect that and in the collection record here uh we are well we have only one data source so that's why it's defaulted pure source so that's fine uh, authorization we don't have to pass if it is already uh, uh, maintained at the base level or once we log in we don't have to redo it again so that should be fine uh, i'm just curious do i have a variable app variable yeah i have it from the last session so let's just map it even see csrf is not required for get queries get or uh, get list in both cases we don't need it so let's add a filter so we go here uh, we'll create a formula uh, create new formula <clears throat> now the formula should be something like this uh, we should have a we should have a string as a substring of variable and then the rest of the string so let's copy this copy here now these are literals and not variables so in a formula we have to escape those by using single quote uh, as you can see here this is our variable so let's add that and then do we have two no so let's add we should have two open parentheses so two open uh, two close parentheses so this is equal now we have a single quotes here but this variable is also uh, enclosed in single quotes so for that we have to uh, bypass the single quote by escape character which is the backslash and then this variable we can replace with just page variable po search and save and save so our formula is basically uh, where is it here basically substrings off get the value of a po search and then find for a supplier name now, if we run, uh, if we go back here uh, and run login, and then we will uh, search. So let's say PAT and search. So you can see now it's it's fairly easy to you know add a filter. We can even extend this filter further. So all you have to do is change this um, uh, this formula like the original SAP, uh, where is it here? Uh, back, ah, well, it's done, session expired. So, but the original had a product list uh, as another search criteria, a search based on a supplier or a product description, not product list, product description. So you can add additional or condition and you know do the same thing like what, what uh, standard SAP PO search criteria sends. So uh, that's all I wanted to show in this video. This is a REST-based example. 
if you are looking for uh, uh, the O database example, uh, check my uh, AppGaver uh, playlist. I have another example where I have shown the same thing, but using O data uh, integration instead REST. For uh, personally, I feel the uh, REST based integration has uh, more flexibility than the O data based integration. And I'm saying this is because the basic thing like, you know, searching based on a substring is not even exist, does not even exist in the OData integration uh, as of now. Maybe they are planning on to, you know, enhance it uh, going further. But for now, I don't see that option.